Okay, so we worked through equations, and now we got to work our way through inequalities. Again, reviewing a lot of stuff real fast. So, guys, listen, you got to ask questions. You got to ask questions. You new guys, got to ask questions. Come on. I haven't heard a question from you guys yet, and I know you have them, and you're not asking them. And uh, if you'll ask it in the context of me showing stuff, it, it makes it a whole lot easier for you to understand. So ask your questions. Okay. So these are solved just like equations and in big red except. So you just you gotta remember the exception. So you gotta remember the exception. Anybody remember it? Inequalities, solving inequalities. There's one thing you gotta do if you have to multiply or divide by a what's by a negative quantity, right? So when you get to a multiplication step, if you multiply both sides by a negative quantity or divide both sides by a negative quantity, what do you have to remember to do, Justin? You got to flip, switch, reverse, however you want to say it, the inequality sign. I like to say reverse, flip will work. Switch, some people say switch, but remember you got to reverse or flip or switch your inequality sign when you are multiplying or dividing by negative quantity. Now, you can't forget that. You, you can't forget that. You can't forget that. You can't forget that. Because if you forget that. They'll be happy too because they probably hear me over there as well. Because if you don't do that, then you're obviously going to get the problem wrong because your inequality symbol is going to be pointing the wrong way. You can't have that. So you just can't you can't forget that. That's a key thing. And so remember to reverse the inequality symbol. All right, so let's go through a couple, and we'll review that and review graphing at the same time. All right, so here's a inequality. How do you know it's an inequality? It doesn't have an equal sign, right? And everybody knows that that's the symbol for, right, greater than. And we know it's a greater than because the alligator is eating things, right? No, we know it's a greater than because what? The arrowhead is pointing to the right, right? It's an arrowhead. That's the symbol. The arrow is pointing to the right. Things get bigger to the right. And therefore, we know that's a greater than. Okay, so again, you got an inequality symbol. We know it's an inequality. How are we going to solve this just like equations? For the sake of some of you new guys, I'm going to show each step here. All right. So... Look, we're not going to do this. You wouldn't do this in Algebra 2. Those of you are, that are proficient, you don't need to show every step unless you feel like you want to. But I'm just for the benefit of the new guys, right? We're going to add a negative 4 to both sides and move that 4. Then our next step, we still have the 3n on the left. Greater than 13 minus 4, we all know is 7. 9, huh? No Kool-Aid for you, brother. All right, and then we're going to divide both sides by 3, right? So we can move that 3. Here, I'll even do it that way. Divide both sides by 3, and so we end up with n greater than 3. Did we reverse, flip, switch, or inequality symbol? No. Why? Because we didn't multiply or divide by a negative, right? We didn't multiply or divide by a negative. We added a negative to both sides, but adding doesn't count. Multiplying or dividing by a negative. Okay, so if you remember how to graph this, I'm going to do it in red. Uh, technically, the graph is supposed to go on the number line. But the problem is this. Here, I'm going to use black. Because usually you've got pencil on a black number line. And if you were to do it on the number line, this is what it would look like. And it's hard to tell, right? So for that reason... I always ask you guys to graph it just above. So circle over the N and arrow to the right, meaning every number underneath that is part of the solution. Why did I put a circle over the 3? Why is there a circle over the 3, Zach? So, so what? What does that mean? What do you mean? Justin? Every number above three is equal to Okay. I don't know if that helps anybody yet. Somebody else give explanation? Wesley? The answer is 
means it doesn't include three. Right, the answer doesn't include three, right? Because three is not greater than three. So we do an open circle to say that number's not included. But every number right after, right? Like 3.0000001 is part of the solution, right? And four and five and seven and 9.2 and 37.857 and 1,634,222.0003, right? Anything to the right is part of the solution. So if you remember, I taught you guys, if you have your variable on the left and then the number on the right, the arrow will always go in the same direction as the inequality symbol, right? So just a refresher there and a reminder there. All right, let's do the next one. Okay, so now step it up a little bit. We've got some distributing here. So feel free to go ahead and work this at your desk. If you want to watch me, go ahead and watch me. Whatever floats your boat. I'm going to do it up here while you guys do it there. And I'm going to show a little more steps than I normally would have just for the sake of some. And again, you may not be as fast, but again, you don't need to show all those steps. Show an occasional one, algebra two is fine. But you should have distributed. I added the 10 and negative 6, got a positive 4. Therefore, I had a negative 4. Therefore, I had a negative 4 to both sides. Now, I had to move the negative 2. Oh, I divided by a negative. I flipped, switched, reversed my inequality symbol. And therefore, I end up with x greater than or equal to negative 2. So in this case, I'm going to put a dot over the negative 2 because the negative 2 is included. Because negative 2 is greater than or equal to negative 2. So whenever the number is included, we put a dot. When the number is not included, we put an open circle. So dot over the negative 2, arrow to the right. How many got that right? Awesome, because you're amazing. John? How did I get the negative 4? Okay, so I added the 10 and the negative 6 for a total positive 4. Or you can move the 10, then move the negative 6, but I just add them first and then move it. Okay. And good. I'm glad you asked. Smart guy. Any other questions? Anybody else? Okay, what do we got? One more on this page. Let me get rid of my shade and put this higher. Okay. So same scenario, only, uh-oh, the does not equal sign. All right, so let's see if I can refresh your memory on how to graph that. So real quick. If we move the 1 to the other side, do you agree the other side now is a negative 6, right? Because I added a negative 1 to both sides. And we're going to multiply both sides by 2 over negative 3, right? So 2 over negative 3. And look, can you reverse a does not equal? Does that reverse? All right. It doesn't mean anything. If it would have been a greater than or a less than, you could flip it, but it, it means nothing to, re to flip a does not equal. All right. It still does not equal. So not a big deal. So where do we end up with? Y does not equal, hey, R bum, or you'll be one. Y does not equal four, right? Reduce before you multiply. You remember how to graph Y doesn't equal four? Anybody remember? Kyle? When you put a, a, a circle over four and arrows in both directions. Circle over the four, arrow both directions, right? Because any other number except four solves the inequality. Is it true zero doesn't equal four? Yeah, that's true. Negative 100 doesn't equal four? Yeah, that's true. 1,000 doesn't equal four? Yeah, that's true. 4.2 doesn't equal four? Yeah, that's true. Everything except for four, right? Does not equal. Good to go? So does not equal, circle over the number, arrow both ways. All right, a couple special situations. Special situations. Every once in a while, the variables will add out. The variables will add out. So you're doing an inequality. You have variables usually on both sides, but it doesn't have to be. 
and your variable poof, disappears. All right, so you're doing your steps, your variable's gone. What do you do? Oh. All right, well, it's going to be one of two situations. If what's left is true, for example, maybe you have what's left, 7 is greater than 3. Okay, that's true. Um, 5 is greater than or equal to 5. Okay, that's true. You know, 10 is less than 100. Okay, that's true. So if your variables add out and what's left is true, the answer has to be, any idea? Has to be, what does that mean? All the real numbers, All the real numbers right? That means every number works. Every number works. If your variables disappear, presto change, oh, they're gone. What's left is true. Hey, you know, you know what? No matter what you put in for the variable, it works. So every number is the solution. Everything, everything. So what happens if you get something, the result is false? Your variables disappear, poof. What's left is false. The answer's got to be constant geometry. Null set. It is the null set, right? There's no solution. Nothing works, right? Nothing works. In other words, no matter what you put in for the variable, you will not get a true statement. There are no solutions, none. None exists. All right, so let's do a couple examples involving this. Okay, so this looks involved, but it's not that big of a deal. If I were doing this problem, the first thing I would do is distribute on the right-hand side. So my right is an 8n minus a 10, right? As you distribute that to, an 8n minus a 10. Makes sense? By the way, uh, Tim and Tim, you'll notice most people in here have four-color pens. Because I'll try to do things in color, and I'll try to use the color to help you to see things when you go back and look at your notes. For example, has this ever happened to you? You're in class. Makes perfect sense. You get home. You're like, what do we do? What's going on? And the idea of the color is so you can go back and look at your notes, and the color makes the steps stand out so you can remember what we did, okay? It just it really does help. All right, so anyhow, that's that side. So look, when I look at this, I see variables on both sides, right? Don't you? And whenever you see variables on both sides, your thought should immediately go to, I want to get all the variables on one side. It's always easier for inequalities to get the variable on the left because it makes more sense to our brains. So I'm going to add a negative 8n to both sides. What happens, and I'll show the step, if I add a negative 8n to the left and a negative 8n to the right, well, notice that's 8n. So those add up to 0, and these add up to 0, right? The variable's gone. Poof. Away it goes. So we're in a world we ended up on this one. I got a negative 6 left on the left-hand side. I got the less than or equal to. And I got a negative 10 on the right. True or false? Is negative 6 less than or equal to negative 10? False. It's false. This thing is false, so the answer has to be null set. You get some time later, you can play with it. Stick any number you want in for the variable. Just make sure it goes in every place where you see the n. Stick a 1 in, won't work. Stick a 0 in, won't work. Stick a negative 1 in, won't work. Stick a 100 in, won't work. Stick a million in, won't work. No matter what you stick a half in, won't work. No matter what real number you stick in, it's not going to work. It's not going to be true. That thing has no solution. It's just the way it is. Okay, so second example here. So again, I would go through and play with the distribution first, see what I've got. So this is a negative 10x minus 5, right? As I distribute that, negative 5. And Tim, just to help you out, always keep the sign with the number. So this is a negative 5 that you're multiplying there, and again, a negative 5 that you're multiplying there. So it's negative 5 twice that gets multiplied. That's what gets that back to be a negative 5. Okay, so what do we have? A negative 1x on the left 
right? Because you're going to add these up. And what happens whenever you have the same quantity on both sides? They cancel out, right? Because if you add a positive x to both sides, guess what? All the x's are gone. Because positive 9 and negative 10 is a negative x. You got a negative x on the other side. Up oh, there goes our variables. They're gone. And again, you can add a positive x to both sides to, to prove it if you want to, but they're gone. Okay, so I got an 11 on the left, and I got a negative 5 on the right, and the inequality symbol is greater than. So this one is true. So solution, all the real numbers, right? No matter what number you put in for the variable, it could be a fraction, a decimal, negative number, positive number, the left side's always going to be greater than the right side, always. Every time, every number, every possibility, always. It's true for everything, okay? So special situations, the variables add out. With the variables added out, then that's the situation that occurs. Any questions on those two scenarios? So you got to think ahead, and you got to remember that, that if your variable's gone, that's going to be situation. All right, the last thing I want to do, one word problem here, and then I'm going to give you the rest of the time to, to get started on your stuff. Now, if, if it weren't for Labor Day coming up, I would have done the word problem section already, which is right before this. So we're going to do it tomorrow. We're flipping it. Um, not flipping it home, but switching the order. Um, so normally this would come right after working a little bit on word problems, but let's see if we can figure it out. All right, find all numbers such that the difference between 10 and twice the number is more than 38. It's just an inequality. It's not a big deal. Okay, so way back in pre-algebra and algebra 1, I said whenever you had a word problem, the first thing you want to do is... Make your own variables. What did I call it? There's three letters. Yeah, name the variable, right? So we want to end TV. We want to name the variable. And look, a lot of times it's not a big deal. In this problem, it's not a big deal. But in some of the problems we're going to do tomorrow and a lot of the problems we're going to do the rest of this year, it, it is a big deal. So if you just get used to naming the variable right off the bat, you're in good shape. So again, you, you got to, all right, so what are we looking for? Find all numbers such that the difference between 10 and twice, all right, the number. All right, it's all we know. All we know is the number. That's it. That's what we're looking for, the number. What do you guys want to call it? X. X. All right, I heard X first. We'll call it X. All right, so we named our variable. Not a big deal. And then I heard you guys say keywords, right? And that is next. Um, that is next. Some students like to either do the equal sign or the inequality right away. So let's do that. Let's, let's do the inequality sign right off the bat. What inequality sign, which don't say anything yet, think. What inequality sign would you use? Can always count on John. All right. Right, do you agree greater than? It's a pretty easy one, right? More than, all right? The left has to be more than the right. Okay, so now we need the left-hand sign side. The difference, so difference has to be what operation? D difference is subtraction, right? So now I gotta subtract. And what am I subtracting? So where does the 10 go, left or right? Left. And what goes on the right? X or 2X? Twice the number, right? 2X? All right, twice has to be two times it. And we said our number is X. And now we're done because the other side is 38, right? Okay, just solve the inequality now. Solve that inequality. And when you're done, ATQ, do you guys remember what that is, ATQ? Answer the question. Make sure you answer the question when you're done. When you're done.
Sometimes the equation answers the question. Sometimes it helps you to answer the question. Question, John? Um, you don't have to. So sometimes the equation will be the answer to the question. Other times it won't. So a lot of times when you have more in this NTV, you got to use it to, to finally answer the question. We'll see that tomorrow. All right, so this one's pretty simplistic. Did you get x less than negative 14? You did flip your inequality symbol, right? Because you divide it by a negative. So I added negative 10 to both sides. I divided both sides by negative 2. So find all the numbers such that the difference between 10 and twice the number is more than 38. So this is all numbers that are less than 14. All numbers less than 14 answers the question. So in this case, the solution to the equation to the inequality is the answer to the question. Any questions? Anybody? All right, great. Homework's there. You, you've got, whoa, nice 16 minutes left. So some of you can get close to knocking that out in class, but you're a little older, so as long as you're working on a form of classwork, I'm fine with that. Um, but great time to get started on this, and this way I'm here and I can help you if you have any questions.